Welcome to the ShareWalls online tutorial videos. This second video of a series of four will further detail the flexible diaphragm design and demonstrate how to use this function in the software. In the previous training video, the difference between flexible and rigid diaphragm distribution assumptions was demonstrated. We showed that depending on the wall configuration, it would be prudent to run the analysis for a worst case scenario with both flexible and rigid diaphragm assumptions. Although it makes sense to do all the time from a software perspective, we also discussed that some codes and standards in Canada and the US do permit designers to assume flexible diaphragm distribution only. For example, in the US, the American Society of Civil Engineers 716 Clause 12.3.1.1 permits diaphragms for one or two family dwellings and certain light frame wood diaphragms to be idealized as flexible. It is ultimately left up to your judgment as the engineer to decide which distribution methods to use. Woodwork software provides the options to allow flexible, rigid, or the worst case for both flexible and rigid diaphragm distribution assumptions. In Canada, Part 4 of the National Building Code provides the criteria for developing loads to an engineered design. Part 4 of the NBC does not have any specific criteria which indicates when a diaphragm can be idealized as flexible, so if completing an engineered design following Part 4, one would need to complete both flexible and rigid diaphragm analysis. CSA 086 Commentary and the American Society of Civil Engineers 716 both provide guidance for when a diaphragm may be idealized as flexible. The equation shown here indicates that if the maximum diaphragm deflection is greater than two times the average shear wall story drift, then the diaphragm can be idealized as flexible. This criteria can occur in mid-rise light frame wood structures. The shear wall software does not calculate diaphragm deflection at this time, so you would need to compare the shear wall deflection results from the software with diaphragm deflection results calculated separately. This is the same existing building that I had in the previous example from video 1. Note that the link to the downloadable file for this simple building is available in the description below. I now want to distribute loads to the shear walls on a certain level. As explained earlier, sometimes you are permitted to complete only a flexible analysis Sometimes you may want to distribute loads based on a rigid distribution assumption, and most times you will want to see what the worst case is when both assumptions are used. I can navigate to the structure block input view, where you will see there are checkboxes for the two types of distribution. If I uncheck one of these boxes, shear walls will not analyze that distribution type when the design is run. By default, both are toggled, but I'm going to turn off rigid diaphragm analysis. Note that when one of the diaphragm analysis is unchecked, the feature for worst case rigid versus flexible diaphragm will automatically be disabled and unavailable. We can now generate the loads and run the design based on a flexible diaphragm assumption. Now we know that the forces distributed to each shear wall are based on the tributary area. We will discuss more details on the torsional analysis in video 4.